Well, hello, friends. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Just before my live show, which is 3 to 5 Eastern, if you like talking this type of hockey, you might want to go on there. We do lots of it, and we have lots of people in the chat. It's interactive. We talk to you. You message us, and we just talk hockey. We're going to be talking the playoffs in this edition. But we'll be talking about all anything else you want to talk about too. We're also doing a mock, not really a mock draft, but uh, we we do the uh, tankathon thing where you see who do the lottery simulated simulator. That's it. <laughs> Anyways, if you like this kind of stuff, we're going to be talking about uh, Mr. Jones. Is uh, Seth Jones? He's saying he wants out of Columbus, pretty much flat out. I'm not signing with you. Okay, bye. <laughs> so now Mr. Davidson is uh, over from New York Rangers after getting ridiculously fired there. Fantastic human being, great hockey mind over in Columbus. And it seems like he's already kind of put his stamp back on there saying, you know, we're not going to be giving away – we're not just going to let it go where we, like for instance, Panarin and stuff like that. But he did kind of side back step. Uh, by Panarin, I mean let him go for nothing, right? And they went for the playoffs. But he said in, in, uh, in fairness, they were going, they thought they could win a Stanley Cup and can kind of understand it. But in this situation, we're going to have to do what's best for the organization. And there's talk that he'll be traded very quickly, probably before the draft to pick up draft picks and all that sort of stuff like that. So let's look at what Columbus may need. And then I'm going to go, go look at three teams and there's far more than three that could be traded. Uh, could that uh, Jones could be traded to and see kind of what they could come back, get back and all that sort of thing like that. Cause it's fun. Let's do it. Hit the subscribe and bell if you want this fine programming. Okay, here we go. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so Jones is a right-handed defenseman. Huge, big right-handed defenseman. And uh, like big, big, 6'4", 209. Uh, he's been talked about in Norris for a long time. Analytically, if you're into that sort of thing, and uh, I, I do follow them, he's actually not as good defensively as you may think. He puts up some decent – he's a little overrated is what I'm trying to say. He's actually a little overrated, but that doesn't matter. Perception is what matters. A lot of general managers out there don't pay attention to analytics anyways. Uh, they just see a big – uh, defenseman that can log lots of minutes as you can see here he logs 25 minutes a night a game can put up you know pretty big points in his career he actually had a down year which might have to do with the fact that he wasn't very happy and a lot of people weren't very happy there but he had a 57 point year 46, 30, and 56, you know, those are good points for a guy his size. In the playoffs, he had nine points in 10 games. There's going to be a lot of interest in a fellow like that. So now we'll look at Columbus and what they may need. Everything, really. But if Max Stomi is your number one center, you may need a center. After trading Dubois away for Lion A, who I assume they're going to sign, um, by since they didn't trade him at the deadline, I don't know. They're gonna let him go for free. Let's assume that they do sign him. They are not bad on the winger front. Nyquist, Gustav Nyquist. I don't know what's gonna be going on with his career. He's been hurt for quite some time. But if he comes back, they got Atkinson, Nyquist, Bjorkstrand, Lyon on the wings. It's doable, but you can't have. Jack Roslovic, who got 34 points in 48 games last year, which wasn't bad. He's got some upside. He's not your number one center, though. You want to play him in a number two role? Okay. 
They need a number one center is what I'm trying to say. Now, do I think they're going to get a number one center for Jones? Probably not. It's possible, though. It is slightly possible. At the very least, they can get a better center than Max Domi and have more depth. Um, the problem we have here with Jones, of course, is that he's saying that he's not going to resign because he's going to be a UFA in 2022. So he's only got one year left on his contract. Now, what can happen in this de in this deals is in a deal like this is they can say you can talk to the agent and work out a contract, and then that'll be worked in the trade. So they get a little more for him. Okay, so we're gonna when we do these. We're going to look at the possibility that they are able to re-sign them and that Columbus allows them and they know beforehand that they're going to re-sign Jones and see what kind of a deal that can be done. Big top line center that can put minutes up. There's going to be a lot of people, teams interested. The first team we're going to look at is the New York Rangers, who is in the same conference, but not in the same division. So it's not ideal and now why would you say what people will ask why why do they does it matter if it's in the same division or same conference and stuff like that a lot of it has to do with um just like if you're uh, we're, we're going to let you work out a contract within your own con conference it's harder to do that um because really you don't want to strengthen the opposition Right, so your New York Rangers will probably have to play a little more to keep Jones in the East and strengthen themselves uh, against whatever they're going to be giving back for the to the to the Jackets um, because they don't want to. They're going to have to play them in the East. They're the team that they're going to have to play in the regular season uh, during playoffs, and if they stack them, they're shooting themselves a bit in the foot down the down the road um so but i think the rangers would definitely be interested certainly defense was a problem they love their guys guys like jones big strong mobile can play some offense i don't think they focus too much on analytics in new york by some of the players that they pick up and keep and stuff like that so I think this would be big. They would really want to be interested. They would be really interested in him uh, for sure. Um, now the question is, what would they have to give up? Okay, first of all, they got they already have Truba and Fox on the right side. That may be something that is a uh, ends things right away, unless they consider trading Truba, who is kind of. Uh, Playing below his contract at $8 million. He had 12 points in 38 games. His offensive production has not really come to fruition. Uh, he's strong. He's big, like Jones. But he's not as good as Jones. Uh, and he makes more money. So Columbus may say... And remember, Davidson, who I was just talking about, came from New York. So it would depend on what his read of Truba is to do a deal like this. Uh, the other thing is, is that Jacob Truba has played the left side before. So they could look at it as moving him over to the left side uh, and bringing Jones in on the right side and playing them together or something of that nature. Um, if they were to be pretty high on that, I think what Columbus would be looking for here, I, I would be looking for Philip Heidel right off the top um he's only 21 years old he put up 22 points it's questionable his offensive upside honestly it really is but he's a big center he's only 21 and he's putting almost up a, he's put put last year he put up almost uh half a point no he did put half a point up per game not bad a 40 some point pace for a 21 year old you might they might consider Heidel and taking a contract back in order to make this work too, right? Um, which contract? Hard, maybe Brett Howden. Brett Howden and Heidel together. That would probably do it. I think they would be happy with that in Columbus 
if they can get a young center and a def and a left winger like that, and they'll fill out their defense off of free agency or with other trades. I don't see other defensemen here being selected by uh, being uh, selected by Columbus because. Sorry, I just wanted to make a double check there. Um, because, like, Lieber Hijack, maybe. Maybe. Uh, the, the other part is with this deal that may kill it is that the Rangers already have some pretty good defensemen coming up. Matthew Robertson. Um, there's a guy that I would consider maybe with, if like, say, for instance, Matthew Robertson's a big kid. Look at his numbers. He's been putting up some decent numbers in college, or sorry, WHL. A point a game. Big guy. He's progressed every year. Uh, he's a lefty, which makes it a little less valuable. But it may be somebody, something that the Rangers would consider since if they were going to get Jones, they wouldn't need as many defensemen uh, in, the, in their minor leagues or in their, for the prospects coming up. So you could do Matthew Robertson and maybe Strom, Ryan Strom. Ryan Strom is a UFA in 2022 himself. So he's got one year in his contract. Columbus could talk to him about signing a contract. He's not a number one center, but he's better than Max Domi. And you'd at least have a couple. And you've got this great, big, strong defenseman coming up to replace Jones. So something of that nature may work out. I don't think that the first round pick for the Rangers would be in play here. Um, possibly they would just trade the first for Jones, but I don't think so for cap reasons and all of that sort of thing. That's the reason why Orion Strom would be included. So that's sort of where I'm thinking they would it would go. Um, now, if they were able to talk contract, you could add in picks. To that and say you know uh, conditions if he resigns you get a first rounder in 2022 maybe or a second rounder or what have you something like that but I do think the Rangers are interested if you're a Rangers fan tell me what you think would you like to have Jones on there and what would you be willing to give up for uh, St. Louis Blues are a team that I think would be very interested in Jones' service, which is weird because they just gave up Peter Angelo, who uh, signed in uh, in Vegas. Now, that being said, Jones is a lot younger. Jones is only 26 years old, I believe. 26 years old, where Peter Angelo was a lot older. And I think they were worried about in that contract with Peter Angelo, uh, what that was going to look like later on. Um, and uh, so they didn't want to get buried in a contract when Peter Angelo was 37, 38, something like that. Where this, you wouldn't have to worry about that so much. Jones is younger. He plays a style that they enjoy, like most teams do like a style that Jones plays. They 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 were talking about trading Vince Dunn earlier. In fact, he almost went to Pittsburgh, apparently, in a Latang deal. So you could easily have him in there, assuming that Columbus uh, is interested in that. Type. He has all the tools, but apparently there's some maturity issues going on, and maybe Columbus can think they can work with that. So you could have uh, Vince Dunn, um, I like a player I really like who will be on the injured is Oscar Sundquist. I love this guy at 2.7 million. I think he can play on your second line. So let's throw him in there. They, I think they would be okay with losing a guy like Sundquist when they have Robert Thomas coming up. Robert Thomas is another guy that could be part of this deal. Another thing is St. Louis is a Western team. So oh, I did not want to do that. St. Louis is a Western team. So they're more inclined to make this trade with St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis might not have to give as much back to be able to do this deal as well uh, because they're in the West. Uh, like the Rangers would probably have to give up more. So I think 
For Robert Thomas, Vince Dunn, and a late first, which they should probably have. Uh, if And then a condition, if they re-sign Jones, they get another first-round pick, something of that nature. Um, Robert, or, or like I said, um, Sunquist, Dunn. I love Klim Kostin. I really like that guy. He's probably a bottom guy, but he's, he, I love the way he plays. He's got a lot of heart. He's a, I think I'm from what I remember, he's a big kid. Uh, I, I, I love that. Um, he would be great in there. Um, now that's not helping them out on, yeah, that helps. That gives them Dunn. Dunn was supposed to be a top four defenseman for sure. Fell into a little bit of problems, uh, not playing well enough defensively, but I think he would be a good piece for Columbus to give it a, sh a shot. If I can get Costin, Sunquist, Dunn, a first round pick, I think I'm pretty happy with that considering Jones is pretty much on his way out for sure. Um, so tell me what you think about that trade. Uh, you probably, I don't know how many people like Sunquist as much as I do. I think he's one of the better two-way centers in the league. Very underrated. Very underrated. And I think Clint Coaston's going to be a, a really good third-line winger. Um, and then Dunn, it depends on what they think they can do with his him person, with, with his defensive game and all of that. But he has high-end talent and skin, skill. Plus, you get a first-round pick. I think that's what you're looking at here. That That's not a bad uh, package to get back. Tell me what you think if you're a St. Louis fan. Uh, and we're finally going to look at one that I think has maybe the best shot. Uh, the LA Kings. First of all, they're in, they're in the West. So um, that's, that's a big bonus. Um, second of all, they're right on the cusp of being a great team. They're right on the cusp. Um, it's not, they're also saying that their, their rebuild is done. They're not trying, they're, they're going to be playing, looking for more veterans to play in this lineup and so on and so forth like that. So um, they don't have a bad defense already, but Drew Doughty is getting long in the tooth. They could really use a guy that can munch some minutes. They just signed Matt Roy to a good, uh, or did they? UFA 2024. Yes, it wasn't this year. Matt Roy, I believe they just signed him. And they really like him, and they should. They've developed him well. Um, he, he got 10 points in 44 games, but it's his defensive game and his relatively good size and his overall play that they really like. Now, if they were going to get a guy like Jones, though, I think they would consider letting him go. So you could go for Matt Roy. I really like Gabriel Velarde. I like him. He didn't have the greatest year last year. It's possible with Byfield coming up um, and Durgachev starting to show a lot of promise there in uh, Russia that they could be interested in moving uh, a guy like uh, a guy like uh, Velarde here to give room for Byfield to move in. And to get a big guy like Jones that can munch the minutes that he can, I think they would – I really like him. I think it was just a down year. He could be a number one center down the road. Really, I think he possibly could. At the very least, he's way better than – uh, Domi and he for now he's young he's only 21 years old so it would be lovely to get Roy and Velarde for Jones and now I think if they're going to get those two guys a deal would already have to be in place for Jones for them to move him because I think LA is pretty high on both of them and would be loath to give them away for one year so they would have to talk to the agent get a deal in place and uh, when you consider that, you know, it's hard to get a read on what Columbus's uh, leverage would be in this situation, but I think something like this might work. Tell me if you would do that if you were in L.A. And thank you for listening to this fine programming. Uh, I'm going to be doing, I think I'm going to do Chicago next. 
uh, Winnipeg. And I don't know, tell me something in the comment section. What's another team you'd like me to see me look at for Jones out there? And until next time, you guys have a great day. Enjoy the fine programming tomorrow. K. Bye.